Hello everyone, it's Sal here. A very warm welcome back to another perfume video. I hope you're doing well. So today I'm going to be talking about some fragrances which didn't quite work out for me. These are perfumes which unfortunately I don't really like very much. Um, but before we jump into today's video, I do just want to throw in like a little disclaimer. I'm sure that these are very well made, um, nice perfumes and um, they just didn't work out for me. So please um, don't take anything I say to heart, uh, especially if you own any of these. I think when it comes to perfumes in your collection, the only opinion which really matters is your own opinion of the fragrances. The first perfume which I really didn't like was Jean-Paul Gaultier La Belle. So the funny thing about this one actually is when I first smelled it, I thought it was going to be um, a love. I actually really, really liked it when I first sprayed it. And um, the initial smell that you get from the fragrance is very, very pleasant. It's like a sweet, kind of um, fresh, juicy pear vanilla kind of smell and it's really quite pleasant. However, I found that as the hours were passing, the smell really did not change at all on my skin. Because it's so toothachingly sweet, I would have maybe appreciated a little bit more complexity. Maybe if they'd added in some florals which would like come out a little bit later on in the scent development, something like that, just to kind of um, help the sweetness to ease off a little bit. I just found it extremely linear and overpoweringly sweet, to be honest with you. Um, it did kind of give me a headache. It was one of those really cloying scents that I felt like I couldn't even wash off. I would try and wash the scent off of my skin, but because it's so potent, it just wasn't even really washing off. It was just so persistent. It was one of those fragrances that are just completely uh, what's the word? Engulfing? It was just too much for me, really. I think maybe the fact that it's such a linear scent, it's such a simple composition, and the fact that it's so overbearingly sweet to me, that's maybe what made it um, not ideal. Uh, I'm not quite sure. So yeah, I just found that fragrance a little bit headache inducing. I found it too much, too strong, and I wasn't really a fan. What I will say though, um, is the new version of this fragrance, the one that came out this year. I think it's La Belle La Parfum. Um, it might be an intense version or something like that. I'm not 100% sure, but it's the new version. I think that that would be much more for me, actually, because um, I believe the base note of that fragrance is tonka bean, whereas the original La Belle had vetiver in there, and I'm really not a huge fan of vetiver at all. That's probably another reason why I really don't like the original one, because vetiver is just not a note that I enjoy at all. I find it um, too earthy, too screechy, and I just, it never, it never really works out for me at all. So I think, you know, that thrown in the mix as well, it's not ideal. Um, however, as I say, the new version, it's composed of pear, vanilla and tonka bean instead of vetiver, so I'm thinking I might enjoy that one a lot more actually. It does sound like my cup of tea and the bottle is stunning, so I think at some point I am going to give that one a try. I definitely won't be blind buying it though, just in case, you know, because of how much I didn't quite enjoy the original one. Um, but it is kind of on my radar, the new version. Maybe if any of you guys have tried it, you can let me know in the comments what you think of it and whether or not you think I would enjoy it. Um, but yeah, I certainly didn't really like the original La Belle. I think if the original La Belle wasn't quite as potent and if it had maybe some florals thrown in there and it wasn't quite as um, ridiculously sweet, if you know what I mean, to me that fragrance is just so sweet um, to the point where it gives me a headache. So that one didn't quite agree with me, unfortunately. Next up today is Tom Ford Tobacco Vinny. Now, this fragrance, um, I did think I was really gonna like it. However, when I tried the sample that I ordered, um, I was very surprised to discover how much I didn't like it at all. So this scent to me, it was far too spicy. Um, I am not a big fan of like, dry spicy scents and to me that's what that fragrance very much was. So it was like quite a dry, um, a uh, smoky, spicy, uh, very masculine leaning kind of fragrance. Um, it really, really wasn't for me. It didn't smell smooth at all. It didn't smell um, well blended. It just smelled quite harsh and quite abrasive actually. And I really didn't enjoy it um, at all to be honest with you. From the house of Tom Ford, I do own Noir Pour Femme, and to me that fragrance is far superior to Tobacco Vinny, which is very surprising again because actually the Noir Pour Femme is just 
from their regular kind of uh, line of fragrances and the Tobacco Vanille is from their private blends so that one is actually much more expensive and it's kind of more exclusive but in my opinion Noir Pour Femme actually smells much more refined, it smells more expensive, it smells beautiful, luxurious, feminine and all of those things that I love. Also Noir Pour Femme has a little bit of spice in it but it's not overwhelming um, but Tobacco Vanille had like far too much spice in there for my liking so unfortunately that was a fragrance which just didn't work for me either. Next up today are two perfumes which I really wanted to get on board with you guys but unfortunately they just didn't work out for me at all and those fragrances are Coco Mademoiselle and Coco Noir from Chanel. So with these fragrances you guys I'm just wondering if it's maybe something to do with my skin chemistry or something like that because they both um, had the same kind of screechiness about them and they both ended up smelling kind of similar like in the far dry down on my skin so basically um both coco noir and coco mademoiselle they just smelled very jarring uh not well blended harsh screechy kind of not soft or refined or anything like that they were just this jarring um strange kind of screechy smell that was not um smooth or well blended or anything like that and um i think it was just something about my skin which was really really amping up a particular screechy note in those fragrances i don't know if it's the patchouli or i don't know what it was but there was something just very harsh about both of those fragrances unfortunately um it's a real shame because i remember i think it was coco noir when i first sprayed that i actually quite liked how it smelled but um unfortunately when it dried down onto my skin it just turned this very strange kind of way and um, as I say, both of them, both of those fragrances had like a screechiness about them, which I really, really did not like. So I am still very much on my quest to find a Chanel fragrance that works out for me because I haven't managed to find one. Um, there is one kind of on my radar, it's Chanso Tondre. I've heard that one talked about quite a lot and I'm wondering if maybe that one would be for me. I was tempted to blind buy it kind of yesterday actually, but I decided to hold off. Um, and wait and try and give it an actual try later on um, if I can just before I buy it to make sure because I've heard quite mixed reviews on that one as well and um, just obviously my experience with the Chanel fragrances so far hasn't been overly what's the word it just hasn't been that positive so far so I'm kind of thinking I don't know if I want to risk blind buying that fragrance um, just in case I really don't like it as well but I am kind of rooting for that scent like I do, I'm hoping that I will like that one because um, as I say, I don't have any perfumes from the house of Chanel yet, just because none of them have worked. Another one that I'm kind of curious about is a flanker of Coco Mademoiselle, actually, and it's Le... what's it called? Um, Privé? It's the newest one, I think, with the frosted glass bottle and it's designed to be worn to bed. So I've heard that that one is a much softer version of Coco Mademoiselle. Um, and that the apparently the patchouli in that one is dyed right down. So I'm wondering if maybe that one would be more for me. Uh, I'm just not quite sure, but certainly the original Coco Mademoiselle and Coco Noir really did not work out. Next up today is Parfum de Marley Delina. Now, first off, I just want to say I don't have any issues with how this smells, um, the bottle or the quality of the scent. I do think it's a nice quality fragrance that smells nice. However, my issue with this perfume is that I have smelt this before in other designer scents. Um, so my feeling is with a niche fragrance at that price point with um, that much hype surrounding it i feel like um when i came to smell this scent i was expecting something quite unique something that i hadn't actually smelled before something with a wow factor about it you guys and i didn't get that from delina in fact when i first smelled delina the first thought that entered my head was oh that smells really similar to Elisab Le Parfum Eau de Toilette, um, a fragrance that I used to own. Uh, that was really the first thought that entered my head, like as soon as I smelled it, it just instantly reminded me of that fragrance. And later on I would come to realise that Chloe Eau de Parfum also smells very similar to Delina in my opinion. Um, so Chloe has notes of lychee, peony and rose in it and it has that same bubbly effervescent bright a girly feeling that Delina has and also the Elisab uh, fragrance that I mentioned. I think it's been discontinued now but it was called Elisab Le Parfum Eau de Toilette and that one to me had a very bubbly kind of um, again the same bright bubbly feeling as Delina and it smelled quite similar. So 
you know, when I smelled Delina, I thought, yes, this is a really pretty smell, but it was nothing mind-blowing. To me, personally, I can understand it's a beautiful scent, I just don't quite see where all the hype has come from. I mean, um, but having said that, this is just my personal opinion. If you think it deserves the hype, then it does for you. Do you know what I mean? Like, each to their own. But for me, personally, when I smelt it, I just kind of thought, oh, that smells like other designer fragrances which I've smelled before, and, um, that was it really. I just kind of thought, you know, where's the uniqueness? Where's the wow factor? Next up today is Viva La Juicy Noir. So this fragrance um, I'd heard quite good things about. Uh, I read the reviews on Fragrantica and I think it got quite good reviews. Um, however, when I tried it, to me it just smelled like a very generic shampoo kind of smell. And to be honest, I actually quite like that shampoo smell if it smells quite nice. I do like a clean and fresh shampoo-y fragrance, I do, but this one it just smelled like a cheap shampoo with nothing much about it, it just um, it kind of fell flat for me. One thing I will say is actually um, a fragrance that I would recommend in place of that one is this fragrance here. So this is Aphrodisiac by Anne Summers and upon looking at the actual pyramid of notes which um, Viva La Juicy Noir has, I would very much compare that to this fragrance here. So to me, this scent actually smells more like how I was expecting Viva La Juicy Noir to smell. I think on Fragrantica it says that there's like berries, um, musk, sort of sweet notes and things like that in Viva La Juicy Noir. However, I would very much apply that description to this fragrance here. So in my humble opinion, I think that this fragrance right here is actually the better version of Viva La Juicy Noir. This is just my opinion at the end of the day. Um, I do think that this is the better version. So if you um, have tried a few of the Viva La Juicy fragrances and you weren't that impressed, um, I would give this one a try instead. This one is also very, very affordable. Um, it has very good lasting power. To me, it's a very good quality fragrance for the money. Uh, the bottle is beautiful. I just love this one, you guys. It's so flirty. It's kind of... Yeah, it smells exactly how I hoped Viva La Juicy Noir would smell, basically. Dark berries, muskiness, sweetness very very feminine, it's just beautiful you guys. So I would recommend this one in place of uh, Viva La Juicy Noir. Next up today is Angel Muse by Mugler. Now this is a fragrance that I used to have in my collection, however it has now found a new home which I'm really happy about because now um, somebody else can actually fully appreciate this fragrance um, when I uh, didn't quite enjoy it as much. So this fragrance is really quite nice, it's a good fragrance but to me it's just a bit too spicy. Um, what I will say though is I've smelt this on somebody else before and I really really enjoyed the sillage, I enjoyed the scent that it gave off, however for some reason when I actually wore it on myself it was just too spicy, like those spicier notes were really really coming through quite a lot more and it wasn't quite the smooth um, chocolate hazelnut cream scent that other people have described. Maybe it works differently on different people's skin, but certainly on me, um, I think it was maybe the patchouli or the vetiver or something like that coming through really, really strongly and I just, I couldn't quite deal with it. I actually thought that it would be a really nice wintertime scent and I thought that I would maybe get some use out of it in the winter, but that didn't happen at all. Like I just ended up not wearing it because it just didn't quite agree with me. It was just too spicy. So that was another fragrance that didn't quite work out for me. And last up today is Armani Rouge Malachite. Now again, this is a very hyped up fragrance. I've heard really good things about this one. However, when I tried it, I was quite surprised at how much I didn't like it at the time. Um, so this fragrance to me was a very heady, very, very mature, um, voluptuous floral scent with some spices in there as well. It was very warm, it was a very powerful strong scent um, that I couldn't quite get off my skin, like it was very very persistent. Um, it just to me it smelled like a really mature kind of uh, heady rich floral scent and I just I really didn't like it you guys. One thing I will say though and I have been thinking about this recently is um, at the time when I tried it, I really was not a fan of the note of tuberose, and I know that that's one of the main notes in that fragrance. Um, however, more recently I've actually grown quite fond of that note, so I'm wondering if maybe I would like it more now, I'm not sure. Um, I think maybe in the future I'll try and give it another um, test, I'll try and smell it again and see if my nose has changed a bit, see if I will like it more in the future, but um, certainly the time that I tried it um, a few months ago it really was not for me suffocating actually. I found it too suffocating, too mature, um, 
I don't know, it just it didn't really smell modern either. I almost remember it having a slight vintagey kind of tinge to it. It was kind of vintagey, very mature, heady, just so many florals, too too much, too warm, a little bit spicy, just not quite for me. But I do kind of want to give that one another try actually because um, now that I know there, there's tuberose in there, I kind of, I was a bit like, oh, hang on a minute, because actually I really like tuberose, so I think I might give that one another try at some point. So there we have it, you guys, my perfumes which did not work out for me. You have no idea how long it's taken me to make this video, I've had to keep stopping and starting it because I keep, um, I don't know what it is, I think I've been a bit nervous actually making this video. So I really hope that you enjoy it, I hope that you see where I'm coming from with this. I'm just sort of trying to open up a conversation here with you guys, um, just about perfumes that don't work out for us, because while there are so many fragrances which inspire us and um, we love so many, there are always going to be some fragrances that don't quite work out and I think it's kind of interesting to talk about that every once in a while, so please feel free to share in the comments section below any scents which haven't quite worked out for you. I would really enjoy uh, reading your comments. Thank you guys so very much for watching today, I truly appreciate it and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, bye!